Hey Flower Tribe, it's Kelly Lehman from Cranberry Fields Flower Farm and today I want to tell you about some landscaping ideas for your front yard. So um, I'm going to give you guys a little while to hop on and if you can't make the whole video feel free to watch um, the repost of this. So I guess I'm going to get started. So um, I love the idea of like a low maintenance plant for my front landscaping. So in the front and center here I've got a whole bunch of boxwood uh, shrubs and these gals are awesome. They've been here for about I guess about uh, Maybe like 17 years 15 to 17 years and uh, this is the first year. I've had a little issue with them um, I had like a little leaf miner bug problem But in the last listen between 15 and 17 years having like what you know one year's worth of problems is not a big deal And I just had save a tree come on out and they gave it like a little bit of a kelp treatment and um, Some nutrients and they're gonna come back and treat that leaf miner later, but it's a really beautiful plant to have uh um, you know, like in your front landscaping. Hey, Rachel, nice to see you from Kentucky. Let me know if the sound's okay. I have like, there's a lot of, um, we're surrounded by farmers and I love them, but a lot of times uh, this time of year, they're doing like a rye, um, uh, they're like bailing all the hay. So sometimes you hear all the tractors in the background. So I just want to make sure you guys can hear me uh, good enough. So in back of these boxwoods, I have a whole bunch of hydrangeas. And what happens is these guys are going to get really tall and you're going to wind up having like a burst of blue and purple in the background, probably like the end of summer. So I like different layering in my landscaping also, and I need a good weeding back here. Uh, years ago, I put a whole bunch of ivy on the walls because we have a lot of rock walls and it was just very, very plain looking. And so I planted a ton of ivy. And so that's the ivy creeping up the walls. You just have to be careful with ivy though, because ivy tends to creep into the windows and it tends to creep uh, into like things like drain pipes and um, like the gutters. So you wanna make sure that you keep your ivy in check. So let's take a walk over here. I wanted to show you some of these climbing roses I have. So in a few weeks, all these rose buds are gonna burst open into like a big burst of like pink color on top of this green. So I think that's gonna be a really pretty look. And uh, I, I actually pruned all my roses back in the beginning of spring. It's a really good idea to, to prune, uh, you know, most of your roses back. These climbers I prune back. I prune back my knockout roses and I give all of my roses a really nice dose of like an all-in-one fertilizer. Um, hey Frank, how are you from Michigan? So it's a really good idea. If you do have roses, they usually need that, that extra care. I'm not a huge fertilizer fan, but I notice that when I don't fertilize my roses, they get like, you know, like bugs and eaten up. So like, I think Bayer has like an all-in-one, it's like a pest control fertilizer, and it really makes a huge difference. Hey Elsa, thanks for checking in from Eastern Oregon. You guys know I love when I see where you're from. I just, that, I just get such a kick out of that. So thank you for letting me know where you're from. If you ha haven't let us know where you're from yet, please just check in on the comments and just let me know where you're viewing this from or just say good morning because I love to see uh, that you guys are here. And I just, I think I saw like Lucy's shadow looming by. Oh, you're from England. Oh my gosh. Blue Angel, 912. Nice. Wow. From across the pond. <laughs> see, that just makes my day. <laughs> I know it's like the little things in life, right? So over here, I've got uh, a magnolia tree. And if you guys are looking for a beautiful, beautiful tree for your landscaping, I highly recommend magnolia trees. I'm gonna show you this gal again next month when these, they almost look like suede. So check this out. Um, Brookfield, Connecticut. Hey, Rich, how are you? So this is going to be a beautiful white creamy bloom in just a few weeks. And they actually smell like, like lemons. Hey, Kate, good morning from Florida. And so these blooms are gonna open up. You can kind of tell it's kind of like white inside there. It turns into this beautiful, giant, tremendous, lemony smelling uh, bloom. And it looks really beautiful in the front of the house. And the bees love it. I actually have a video of like bees like getting the pollen from there and they actually look drunk. They're like spinning around. They can't even like, they can't even control themselves because they're going so like insane. And here's some other uh, blooms that are about to burst. And what's really cool about this one, this is called a, a leather leaf magnolia. The back of leather leaf magnolia looks like actual brown 
leather. It looks like suede. Actually, I don't know why they don't call it a, a suede magnolia, but it looks really beautiful in arrangements. A lot of times in fall, I'll use these magnolia leaves and I'll just turn them and I will put them uh, actually in... Uh, you know, in like the arrangements to show the brown. Yeah, Elsa says it's bee time. It is bee time. We've got all these honeybees because we just got like a whole um, new hive last week. My friend Eddie helped me set it up. And we have bees that were sent to us from um, Midas Bees. Oh, hey, Janet. Good morning from Minnesota. So my friend Tom over at Midas Bees sent over like five, like, beehives. Or, well, they're actually bee, like bee houses for uh, solitary bees. And then I'll tell you all about those another day. Today is a world... Oh, today's World Bee Day. Frank, I did not know that. Wow. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, guys. Now I'm in the know. You guys always know so much more than me. That's terrific. Oh, so it's a good day to tell you about my new, my new bees. Hey, Alicia from Connecticut. Nice to see you. So here's more of that ivy climbing up the wall. And I just want to show you like the, the big effect of the ivy. So you can imagine this big wall at one point was just stone and it just looked really plain. So ivy was kind of a really economical way to add some huge uh, pop to this. Oh, wow. Hi, Anna from Romania, Europe. Wow, love that. We're getting very exotic now. That's terrific. Thank you. So yes, yeah, so you can tell like that, that kind of pop that that ivy makes. And listen, it took a while for this to grow up. And last year it was growing. It was actually growing inside of my house, inside that window. That's my bathroom window. That's like a guest bathroom window. So we had to cut that out. But then it looks pretty creeping up over here also. And I love the idea of stone and wood and ivy all together, almost like that, um, like an enchanted cottage type look. So that's what my side door looks like here. And then I've got more boxwoods. And that leaf miner, I'll tell you guys, once that infected one of the boxwoods, it, it got them all. So it's like a little bug that spread. But these guys are looking good. I'm glad I got them, uh, I'm glad I got them treated. Hey, Mr. Rogers Trolley, good morning to you. And I've got more roses over here. So once again, uh, I really love the idea of just like simple, burst of solid colors. So instead of having like, you know, like 55 tchotchke colors going on here, I'm going to have the green, the deep green of the boxwood, and then I've got the deep green of the ivy in the back, and you know, it's all different shades of green, and then I'm going to have some gorgeous deep red colors coming up. So that's just, I think it's almost like a, a bit of a sophisticated look, just having like beautiful, like s simple colors on top of each other, kind of like a layering. And so that's what this side section looks like here. Or oh, here's some roses in bloom now. So here you can see what I'm talking about, that color with your landscaping. Hey, Anne, thanks for checking in from Toronto. So here's uh, more of these. These are like some climber roses here. And I just like the way it looks. And you can tell I've got like, even though I, I added that rose control. Oh, <laughs> hello there. Who is it? Sinagarsi, Queen of the Gardens, thank you, from U the UK, across the pond. Thanks for checking in. So here is like that really just beautiful red color. And I'm, oh, I'm sorry, I was showing you these guys. Yeah, so the bugs really, really love these, um, you know, these rose leaves. But what's really interesting is the bees that um, Tom sent me from, Midas bees, they are called cutter bees. And what they actually do is they actually punch out little holes in rose leaves and they use it to kind of wrap up. I think what they do is they wrap up like, um, you know, some of the, the new babies that are coming. Good morning, Kathy from Vancouver. So, but I have to check all my, my, my Midas bees facts. So I shouldn't be giving out facts that I'm not quite sure of yet. So Tom, don't be mad if I'm giving false information here, but I will tell you guys about those. But I don't think this is from the leaf cutter bees. This is from somebody that I don't want here because my leaf cutter bees haven't really hatched yet. Okay, and then I wanted to show you, uh, we have a, a little, like a fountain here. And I wanted to ask you guys if anybody has advice because we get a lot of algae buildup in this uh, little fountain. And I wanted to find like an organic solution to keeping the, the algae back. So like we'll go to like Home Depot or the garden centers and we'll add like a little bit of like an algae, like an anti-algae liquid. But um, the birds are always taking baths in here, which is so beautiful. And I don't want to put chemicals in here that can hurt them. So does anybody have a good solution for like an anti-algae thing for water that's more natural than chemical? Because that would be awesome. And so we used to have fish in here, but my two cats, Tigger and Shadow, used to have a field day fishing 
and eating there. So I kind of felt bad. So we stopped doing the fish in there. But we've got some leaves we have to get out of there. But it's very peaceful to have a water element um, in your gardens if you can, or you know, like even a smaller one, even if you have like a tiny fountain. I know sometimes it's, you know, the space is an issue. What about the tiny, oh, what tiny, let's, Elsa says, what about those tiny slugs that clean water? I don't know about these tiny slugs that clean water. I'm gonna have to go look them up. Thank you for that. I wanted to give you some advice if you're laying down pebbles for your landscaping, make sure that you put a weed fabric down first because I will tell you that the weeds love to come up through these pebbles. And so you should really put down like a weed fabric first and then you're gonna lay down the pebbles. And then what I do is I'll also sprinkle preen in the beginning of the season, because preen is a great weed preventative if you can get it down early enough. And I just saw on Amazon, there is something called preen natural. Has anybody used that yet? And it's supposed to be good for like vegetable gardens. So I, I haven't used it yet, but I'm, I'm very interesting. Uh, oh, also said, I'm not sure what they're called. Yeah, you've seen them in aquatic planting. Hmm, interesting. So anyway, if anyone's tried that natural preen, let me know. Let me know if it works. Let me know what you think because uh, it seems like a good alternative to like, you know, regular preen. And then I've got some knockout roses here that are gonna give us like that burst also. We've got a little bench that we sit at here. And I've got, oh, I have to show you one of my favorite things that Shell and I just bought. We bought a bird feeder. Let me try to get over here more. I'm gonna try to walk slow so I don't give you guys agita. So we bought a bird feeder. We literally spend hours watching these birds here. Right now I'm kind of scaring them away. Sorry guys. But we sit like uh, in the front window of our house and we just like, we'll have tea after dinner and we will sit and stare at this thing for like, I don't know, like it feels like hours. And now we've got like cardinals and blue jays and it's just absolutely mesmerizing. So I put some uh, bird feeders that we liked in my Amazon shop and I put that Amazon shop in descriptions below in case you're interested in seeing some of the bird feeders that we have here or ones that are similar. Down here, I've got more knockout roses and these guys are in a bit of a shady spot. So they don't give me like, a, it, it's not a tremendous plant, but it, it gives me some blooms each, each year. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the other side because I have more knockout roses over there that are blooming. These are daffodils. I have a lot of clumps of daffodils here, but you can tell like this bed, I kept really super clean also. Like I don't have a ton of color in here. Like my secret garden is just like, it's like pink peonies and then there's hydrangeas and you know, there's all sorts of limelights and everything. There's like a big mishmash of color that I love for back there. But here I like to be, to be very peaceful. So I actually have most of this bed is empty, except for that cluster of those daffodils that were just in bloom and it looked really pretty. But what I did is I leave the daffodil leaves in place because the plant needs to continue to feed itself. So it's gonna store all that food from photosynthesis in the bulbs for, uh, you know, for the plant to eat during the summer and then it will come back next year. So that's the story with this little bed here. These are called Ilex uh, Mountain Holly and it's like just another good hedge to have. Oh, look who snuck in here. I didn't even see you here, Lucy. Hello. So the Ilex are another good choice for landscaping. Uh, they're low maintenance. Sometimes they get a little bit leggy, but uh, I like them a lot. And they're like a really pretty, pretty green. Elsa said, my daffodils have not bloomed this year. Oh, that's strange. I have some on the opposite side getting sun. Hmm, daffodils are usually uh, one of those, you know, tried and true bloomers, but listen, I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe the weather was kind of odd by you this year because we had a lot of weird weather weather here, right? Wasn't it like a crazy year for weather in spring? That's strange. Hmm. Any ideas, guys? Why wouldn't your daffodils bloom? I have to say that's a new one. Anybody else have that issue? Here are some more of those knockout roses that are in bloom right now. And this guy gets a little more sun. That's why he's blooming a little bit more. And in the back, you can tell the tall trees. Oh, Elsie, you're zone 6B. Oh, I'm zone 6B too. Hmm. I don't know. And we have a little like daffodil mystery going on here. So in the back of this red uh, rose, it's not double knockout rose, you'll see those tall green uh, trees are called arborites. And um, we have them kind of all over the property. I like to put arborites in when I want to have like a grand entrance or like, you know, I want to kind of like highlight an area. So that area back there is what I want to create um, a memorial garden for my mom. I'm not sure if... Um, 
if some of you saw, I just posted like a, like a May garden tour and I kind of walk you through the whole property. So that's, you can check that out if you're interested in like the whole garden tour. Uh, but I talk about wanting to put a whole bunch of double knockout roses in that back garden. So yeah, somebody said that maybe the daffodils were eaten by an animal. Is that a possibility, Elsa? Maybe that barley straw works. Wait, for what? Oh, I missed that whole leash. <laughs> I have to go back and see what, what's the barley straw work for? Is that for the algae? Uh, thank you for uh, checking in from Virginia. A tip for, for larger roses and bushes, Epsom salt. My moms are seven feet tall with huge roses. Oh, that's interesting. I have to try that. So you just, what do you, sprinkle the Epsom salt around the plant this time of year? I'm gonna try that because everybody, I don't know, everybody wants more roses, right? You can never be too thin or have too many roses. Okay. Where can I send you a picture of my hydrangeas? They keep dying. Oh, super question. Thank you, thank you, thank you for asking that. Please post pictures of your garden questions on the Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe Facebook group because there are gardeners from all over the world and they are posting their garden questions and their pictures and people from all over the world, gardeners from all over the world are answering these questions. So I asked you guys to please help me out because so many people, I get like hundreds of questions each week on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook and um, I, I can't keep up with them all, but you guys know so much more than me most of the time. So you've been tackling uh, the questions that are being posted there and I so appreciate that. So please hop on over to the Kelly Lehman's Flower our tribe Facebook group. There's a link in descriptions below and please post those questions and please, 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 if you can, if you can be kind enough to try to answer them if you can for me. And I try to get over there at least twice a week. So I love seeing you guys showing up there and there's a lot of friendships being formed there. A lot of people are hanging out there talking a lot of garden talk. Uh, oh, okay. Afternoon from Hampshire in UK. Thank you, Rachel. Thanks for checking in. I wanted to show you another bird feeder that I have that I didn't put up yet. Hey, Kathy Wang. <laughs> cute little cute little character there thank you for that love that that's awesome <laughs> appreciate that passed by lucy again i'm going to try to walk slow so that you guys don't get like i said that vertigo you can see the barn in the background there we just planted seven thousand sunflower seeds in back of that row of, of ewes there i have my sunflower field but here well let me just tell you a little bit about hardscaping here is we have like stone that's a path. And guys, if you're like coming up with a, a design for your front landscaping, I always like the idea of doing like squiggly paths. I know some people like straight paths, but know that that's not the only option. We like a lot of curves. So if you can tell like this wall in front of my house, it's not just a straight shot, like it's not a straight line because most things in nature are not like angles. They're not straight. They're like rounded. They're like fluffy. Like I'm even next to this our variety tree here and like you tell like everything's kind of rounded and kind of soft edges nothing's really pointy or spiky um oh okay so someone asked where is the facebook or instagram address if you look in descriptions below it should be there and i think it says join us on my kelly lehman's flower tribe facebook group if not you could just hop on facebook and in the search bar just type in kelly lehman's flower tribe facebook group and it'll pop up because it's an actual group Okay, so this is like more, like I said, those squiggly lines. So we like the squiggly lines. And I want to show you this other bird feeder that I just bought. I haven't tried it out yet, but I'm super excited about it. This one you pop on your window. So like you pop, you pop it on the window and like the bird's sitting here and you're like in back of it. And you can actually see the bird like on the other side of the glass. So it has like such suction cups. So that's pretty cool. So uh, I'm gonna try that out. I'll let you guys know how that, how that works. And today's cup of caffeine is brought to you by Jill from New Jersey. Jill bought me a cup of coffee and she supported my YouTube channel. Thank you for that, guys. If you're liking my tips and you would like to uh, buy me a cup of coffee, you can. There's like a little link in descriptions below also. And I appreciate that. And I appreciate all the support you guys give me. You know, it really supports the channel too. When, you, when you're adding comments and you're hitting that like button, that just helps me out tremendously. So I, I really appreciate all the support. So Lucy needs to cool off. It is really hot here today. It's gonna be 90 here in New Jersey. What's, what's the weather like by you guys this week? Um, what else did I wanna show you? These are some birch trees that we have. I also like birch trees. 
um, in front landscaping and in back landscaping, but make sure that you keep up with the pruning because what happens is sometimes the branches get super heavy and they can crack under the weight of like the snow in the winter. So we had Save a Tree come out and do like a heavy pruning this year. So every couple of years we have to get like those big top branches thinned out uh, because otherwise it can cause a huge issue and it can actually like crack large sections of the tree off and then you're in trouble because to try to grow these guys back would be it would take like another 20 years <laughs> so you don't want that to happen and so yeah so this is just kind of like what my front landscaping looks like and let me just take a look at my little notes because I always have some notes because I, I don't want to forget anything uh, to tell you guys about any questions you guys have that I can help you with today Hopefully I can answer them. If not, somebody out there does. I have to say, you, the Flower Tribe is unbelievable at like offering their garden tips. I mean, you guys just, you tackle all these questions every day. Like every day I go on there and there's like 15, 20, 25 questions. Uh, let's, oh, so Alicia, so you use, tell me again, what was it that you used for that? Was it, was it a hay? <laughs> Look at my senior moment. It was something that you use and you just sprinkle it in. It was like an organic method for keeping the koi out. All right, so Elsa said, how can you get rid of weeds from the lawn? I don't know. I, I know that there's a lot of lawn, um, things that you sprinkle on, on your lawn this time of year. Anybody have anything that they love? Rachel says, it's 73 degrees there in Kentucky. Uh, it's humid. It feels like 90, I bet. I have to say, our lawn is usually a mess. You know, we have so many flowers here that we're always keeping up on, and the farm can be so such a, a chore that we don't really do a lot of fertilizers on the lawn. Mr. Rogers' trolley's in Zone B. And he's got an endless summer hydrangea. Oh no, the, I'm sorry, the comment disappeared. Tell me again about your endless summer. I wasn't fast enough to read that one. <laughs> uh, the beauty of technology. I'll keep strolling and I'll wait for your questions to pop up a little bit more because I'd like to answer at least one or two more before we take off today. In back of these uh, giant trees here are my peonies. So I'm gonna start taking you guys on like a peony tour, hopefully starting maybe next week or the following because we're gonna have thousands of peonies coming up. Oh, Mr. Reggie, you have an endless summer uh, to plant. Am I safe planting it in full sun in zone four? Should I wait? You know what? I always love planting them in morning sun and afternoon shade. I, I think it does the best because it doesn't burn up. If you don't have a choice, you can give it a shot, but I would definitely, definitely try to do that morning sun and the afternoon shade. Because what happens is that, you know, it gives you these beautiful, beautiful blooms. And then if it's in full sun, those blooms just like burn up and they get like brown and crispy and it gets very disappointing. So if you can try to give it like a shot of that afternoon shade, that would be best. So, um, okay guys, so I'm going to take off and I'll see you guys next Thursday, hopefully at 1030 AM. I'm so happy when you all show up and thank you for all your comments and for checking in and letting me know where you're viewing this from. I really appreciate, appreciate all you guys. And please come visit me over on and, and all of our family, our flower family at the Kelly Lehman's, uh, flower tribe Facebook group. And hopefully I'll see you over there. Um, oh, I do have apple trees. That's a great question. How do you take care of daffodils at how to take care of daffodils after okay so basically the daffodils once i put them in the ground i just leave them alone like i don't do anything with them i don't fertilize them and i just like let them i'll like here's a whole bunch of daffodils now i'll just let them kind of fade away on their own and then the leaves just fall back to the ground you know after they're done you know being green and then that's it and then they just come back year after year and the deer leave them alone and so do the rabbits because there's something called lycorine that runs through their leaves and the flowers and it upsets the animals stomachs so it's a terrific like deer proof rabbit proof plant so okay guys so i'll see you uh next week and uh check out that may garden tour um, it's kind of fun to see like how it has like the pictures of like the, the plowing and, and how we actually get all the seeds in the ground and it shows you like what the secret garden looks like. So check that out. Um, oh, can I do a video of taking care of apple trees? Well, here's the thing. We have a lot of apple trees that I have save a tree come in and they take care of them because that's way beyond my skill set. So save a tree will come in and they'll spray it for like diseases. And um, that's the only way I can get fruit because if they don't, if save a tree doesn't come, I don't get fruit or like the animals just eat them all up or all the apples are rotten. So that's the only <laughs> apple tree advice I can give you. Bye. Thanks so much, Sharon, for checking in. Okay, guys, I'll see you next week. Have a great weekend. I have no idea how to turn this off again. <laughs> Why is that so hard for me?